Tom, how you doing? Loomis, how are you? Oh, not bad. Same old song. Tracking down bad guys. <laughs> That's what we get paid for, isn't it? Yeah, really. How Stoner? I haven't seen him in a while. I guess he's doing okay. Actually, I haven't seen him in a few days. How's the uh, task force coming in the Eden case? Well, it's going very slow. You know, we really don't have much to go on. Uh, well, uh, sounds like an interesting case. A lot more interesting than what I'm doing. Collaring shoplifters all day. Actually, I expect it to be very interesting. Well, what do you think? Are they going to be able to tie Eddie Lorimer into all this? I don't know. You know, all we have is a few suspicions. You can't bring that to court, can you? Well, you know, uh, I was talking to the chief about uh, hitching up with you on the task force. You were? Yeah. You have any objections to that? Well, I guess that's up to the chief, isn't it? Well, anyway, I just heard something that might help. You know that uh, Pietro kid? And what about him? Well, we found his abandoned car. That means he's real close by. All we have to do is reach right out and grab him. Well, why don't you just go out and grab him, Lewis? I mean it. If you'll let Chad live, I'll go with you. He deserves to die. His father is the president of that so-called democracy of ours. He's a traitor. He's a murderer. But Chad is only his son. That does not make him a criminal, too. Jody, I swear to you, it's not true about my father. This lunatic is delirious. I do want to go home. I have to go home. Jody, my mother is alone now. I have to make sure she's OK. They'll probably just arrest you, too. Yes, they will, if they can catch me. I'm a wanted criminal there, too, Jody. But I can find a way back into my own kingdom. Jody, don't do anything crazy. Why would you want to do this? Because I think there's some way I can help them. And I doubt if I can, but I'm willing to try. Do you hear me? I'm willing to try, but only if we can leave here right now. I, I don't think it's possible. Please understand, I thought if I could kill him, kill the son of the man who sold us all, it would be a symbol. It wouldn't matter what happened to me. No, you're wrong. It does matter. And we can get away. We will. I have no transportation. I, I, do, I do. I have a car, Pietro. Trust me. I'll do as I say. I swear I will. Yes, you will. I know you will. I believe you. Okay. I trust you. Okay. Come on, let's go. deep-seated need for affection and tenderness. I see you're about ready to clean up. Well, yeah, I was just getting ready to leave. Well, good timing. I thought you nearly worked all day. Oh, I am working, but I took a break. We're getting a lot done over at the theater. Gavin and Cliff have been helping me. It's been great. Oh, that's great. I'm, I'm glad they're helping you. Yeah, but I'm going to need a little bit more than muscles pretty soon. Oh, like money. Yes. And I think I know where it's going to come from. Is it who I think it is? Yeah, Buffy Revere. Who else? Did she actually make you an offer? Well, no, but I know she's interested. I know she's interested. Jim, doesn't that seem sort of curious to you, given the fact that she was just jilted by an actor? Yeah, she said something kind of funny when she said, well, you can't condemn the whole profession just because of John Wilkes Booth and Johnny Gentry. Well, <laughs> she is a character, isn't she? Yeah, but she likes actors. And she really wants to help get this acting company off the ground, which is kind of surprising, because she uh, got burned a couple of times in Broadway investments. So she figures she's safe with you, though, that you won't be making any flops. Well, I'm doing my damnedest. 
Jim, hasn't it occurred to you that maybe she's investing because she thinks she's going to get a replacement for Johnny? Well, it could be. Well, I think you ought to watch out, kiddo. I think she's got her eye on you. Nah, she likes the pretty ones. <clears throat> You're not exactly chopped liver. Hey, thanks. I like the pretty ones, too. Yeah? So yeah. why are you hanging around here? <laughs> well, I was looking for a pretty one to go to lunch with me. Jim, I've got a date for lunch. Oh. Well, it's not Sky, is it? You just had dinner with him. I know, but he called me this morning, and, and he said he had something really important he wanted to discuss, and I didn't know you were going to be free for lunch. I thought you were going to be working at the theater all afternoon. Okay. All right, well, I'm going to go back to the theater. Have a good lunch. That's Loomis. How are you doing? You sold any old masters lately? Don't make me laugh, will you? My lips are swollen. Huh, how did that happen? The date I had last night turned out to be a gorilla. She kept biting my lip. What's up? Look, Eddie, I don't think this plan of Joe's is going to work out. This uh, accidental shooting of a certain cop by his partner. Now, listen, if you set it up right, it's got to work, no? Yeah, but this certain cop isn't too happy about being associated with me. When I told him the chief might put me on the task force, he didn't throw his arms around me and tell me... Take me away from all this. Well, he's not exactly your type, and I'm glad to hear that. Anyway, look, your boss gives the orders, you understand? He ain't got nothing to say about that at all. What's he got against you, anyway? Well, you know, he's upset because that uh, girl was shot a few days ago. You know, that radical kid. Oh, it's too bad about him. Hey, you were just doing your job, right, babe? <laughs> yeah. That's the way it was. Okay, then. You just keep uh, working on him, you understand? I don't want that guy breathing for too much longer. You see, he's got this little personal vendetta against me. And I definitely want him to disappear. Have I got your uh, personal guarantee on it? You got it, boss. Signed, sealed, and delivered. Picking out on a sandwich. What if somebody walks in the office and wants to buy something? What are they going to think? They're going to think it's lunchtime. Anyway, it's not likely a customer's going to come in. I mean, uh, I haven't seen too many of them around since I've been here. All right, all right. Enough with the wisecracks already, will you? Get busy and finish what you got to do. And don't spill it all over the table. What if a customer does come in? I'll sell them something. I'll give you a little bonus. How would you like a nice new lamp for your apartment? No, thank you. I, I don't know anything about paintings. What's to know? If you don't want to sell a painting, sell them your lunch. Look, there's a price list in the drawer. You take it out, you figure it out, and you come up with the price, okay? And while you're at it, uh, finish the payroll for the Lucky Salvage Company, okay? Mm -hmm. Don't take too big a bite. You're going to wind up a lot, Joe. Goodbye. So long, Eddie. Poppy, how you doing? <sighs> Damien, what are you doing here? You just missed Eddie by no more than 10 seconds. I know. I saw him go out the door. I was watching him from across the street. Why? Because I wanted to see you. And I thought maybe your boss wouldn't approve. I don't approve. Look, Damien, how many times do I have to tell you? I, I can't see you anymore. It's, it's just too risky for both of us. Hey, take it easy. I'm not taking a big risk walking into an art gallery. I think you're taking such a big risk either. Yes, I am. I'm risking my job. Well, why don't you get a different job? Well, I can never find a job that pays as well as this one. And for another thing, you don't quit a job with Eddie Lorimer. You're retired. Poppy, I told you, if you think you have any reason to be afraid, I promise you I'll get you police protection. Damien, I'm asking you for the last time. Go away and leave me alone. I've got work to do. Oh! Lord, look at this. I, I got mayonnaise and, and, and tuna fish all over this payroll sheet. Wait what a, a mess. Who's this Troy Bannister? How should I know? Uh, 
He's just some guy that went on the payroll this week. Bannister. Oh, that's interesting. Close call here, Gavin. If you hadn't arrived when you did, I think there might have been a disaster in this place. Oh, boy, I am wiped out. Mm, it's okay. You have nothing to worry about now. The guy must have been out of his head, Chief. Probably had the fever. Yeah, well, listen, I'll get statements from all of you later on. Now I'm going to go to the hospital and see what Pietro has to say for himself. By the way, you know that Pietro, that's not his real name. What is it? Ellis Campbell. Doesn't mean anything to you? All right. Jody, you sure you're all right? Mm, yeah, I'm fine, thanks. You don't want me to notify the caller, Miles? No, no, there's no reason to alarm them now. All right, well, I'll be seeing Miles at the hospital anyway. Come on, Robertson. Thanks, Gavin. You couldn't have walked in at a better time. What the hell was going on here? Was he taking Jody hostage again? Yes, it, it, uh, it was something like that. And Jody really had nothing to do with it. She just picked a bad time to walk in. No, I'm, I'm glad I was here. He might have... Might have what? Come on, tell me! He came here to kill me, Gavin. He had some sort of crazy grievance against the government of Eden, against my father. And so he wanted to kill you? Yeah. I guess I was the most reasonable facsimile he could find. I see. I think. Well, now, wait a second. There was a little more to it than just that. There was a letter. What letter? Uh, Jody, you don't know if that was real or not. What letter? There was a letter that Pietro received from his mother saying that... Well, anyway, it was smuggled out of the country. Or so he says. There was nothing wrong with the Postal Service in Eaton. Well, the letter said that Pietro's father and brothers had been arrested. That it was in reprisal for what had happened here. Could any of this be true? Oh, how do I know? In any case, I had nothing to do with it. Hey, look, I'm just asking. Look, I have nothing against that man. I don't even know who he is. And certainly I wouldn't want any harm to come to his family. But you just can't take his word for that whole story. You know, frankly, from the other end of a gun, the guy didn't seem very reliable to me. His father and brothers may well be criminals and subversives. Maybe they were jailed for a good reason. I have no way of knowing. But one thing I do know, you can't make judgments about such things from a distance of 6,000 miles, can you? No, you're right, you can't. Well, maybe the police report will tell us more. I'm sorry, but I just can't be responsible for the feelings of every political dissident who goes berserk just because he doesn't like the way my father combs his hair. <sighs> maybe now you can understand why I wanted to keep my identity a secret. Are in. I thought you'd like to see them. Oh, dear, do I have to? Oh, don't be so negative. You'll love them. Take a look. Oh, look! How nice! We're so first in the time slots at 6 and 11. Well, hooray for us! Hooray, indeed. And if you'll notice, the children's show is more than holding its own. It's up two points. Now, tell me, what would this station do without the Travis sisters? Oh, thank you, boss. All praise is welcome. Well, my dear, I must say, I am delighted to be receiving and spreading a little good cheer. It's a welcome change from the heavy atmosphere at home. Oh, dear, that doesn't sound too good. How are the living arrangements with Raven coming along? Well, to put the best face on it, it's a disaster. <laughs> Poor Raven. I'm really very sympathetic to her situation, Nicole, but I honestly don't know what to do to help her out of this depression. I have never seen her in a worse mood. Well, she's been through so much. She just needs some time to get her bearings again. I know, I know, but I'm trying to make her understand there is no way to accomplish the thing she wants most of all in this world. Which is? To change Skylar's mind about her place in his life. Oh, dear, is she trying to win him over? Oh, my dear, it isn't my nephew that she wants. It's all the possessions that she wants to regain, given to her by her husband. I'm afraid she places a great deal of importance on material things. And he has taken everything away from her? <laughs> Down to the last bauble and fur coat. He has taken back every item he can prove was given to her by Jefferson Brown. Well, that's being rather vindictive, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know. I suppose he feels he has a right. He's still terribly resentful about all the things that were taken from him during his absence. And he blames Raven for most of it. Mm. And she thinks that she can change his mind. Oh, she does. She thinks she can charm him into a sudden show of generosity. By making herself more alluring, he won't be able to resist her. 
the truth is, he is in no mood for her brand of allure. <laughs> well, don't worry, Geraldine. She will give up the battle sooner or later. The thing that worries me is this latest scheme of hers. She thinks she can make him jealous. She said it worked beautifully with the first scholar, Whitney, so why not this one? Oh, well, has she said how she intends to make him jealous, or rather, uh, with whom? I don't want to know. I remember once before being in this restaurant and hating it. But today I find it very pleasant indeed. I have no doubt in my mind it all has to do with the company. Well, it seems to take very little to please you these days. Well, I wouldn't call luncheon with you a very little thing, Val. In fact, it's yet another high point of my day. High points are becoming rather commonplace with you, aren't they? Yes, things are going very well. And I intend to see to it that they continue going well. My whole life is in order now. I've organized my household with a fine staff that keeps things running smoothly. I'm even taking some pleasure in managing my own business affairs. That must demand a lot of your time. I have to admit, I never was much interested in the business end of things before. I was quite content to be a playboy. <laughs> Terrible term, isn't it? And leave the business to others. But recently, I've realized how much fun there is in handling things myself. The buying and selling, hiring and firing, and all that sort of... I'm sorry, I seem to be boring you. Oh, no, Sky. It's just that I deal in business in such a small way that anything larger than the studio seems sort of intimidating. Anything else bothering you? I guess I feel a little odd about having lunch with you so soon after seeing you for dinner. Is there some law about dining with the same person within two days? No. Anyway, I told you this was a special occasion. I've been thinking a lot about how much I owe you, Val about how important you were in helping me resolve my recent problems. After all, you were the one who made positive identification of Jeff Brown's body possible. I've been trying to think of a way to thank you. And I believe I found it. Sky, no thanks are necessary. I just told the truth. And I'm sure that the authorities would have come up with the same thing eventually anyway. Maybe, but you made it happen almost overnight. You deserve a little reward. It seems slight in light of all you've done, but... Oh, no, no. Oh, yes. Oh, Sky, I couldn't possibly accept that. Val, I insist, please. <sighs> it's lovely. I just... R.W. <sighs> I think this must have been meant for somebody else. The jeweler's fault, the idiot. Now that I see it, it uh, it's not suitable anyway, Val. I'll, uh, I'll, t I'll, I'll, I'll find something else for you. I'll, I'll choose something even better. Kavanaugh, Jody's brother. Close enough. It's like I finally got my wish concerning you. Yes, to deliver me into the hands of the police. No, it's to get you back into the hospital. I warned you about that bullet wound. Told you might get infected. And I sure did. You've been wandering around with a fever ever since. All right, don't worry about it. We're going to take care of it. Yes, I know you will. You'll patch me up, and then you'll put me in prison. Why don't you just concentrate on getting well, all right? It's my job to see you do just that. Dr. Kavanaugh. Yeah. Thank you. Please, tell Jody that I'm sorry. I never meant to harm her. I hope she knows that. Take it easy. I'll look in on you later. Thank you. Miles. How is he? Can I go see him? Uh, why don't you let him sleep for a few hours? I just start him on an antibiotic series. Look, he's going to be all right. Well, Absolutely. listen, I want him healthy in a hurry. I've got a couple of questions I want to ask him. Nobody comes or goes except hospital personnel. Right, Chief. Miles, did he say anything when you were inside there? Oh, just that he was sorry for having given Jody such a rough time. 
not sorry about giving Chad Sutherland a hard time, is he? You really think he was going to kill him? I think so. He was saying something about wanting revenge for his family being imprisoned in Eden. It's a good thing Jody talked him out of it, or else he'd be facing a murder charge right now. First thing tomorrow morning, 